Good afternoon. I'm Sinet Cavalier, and I'm here to welcome you to the Energy and Environmental Conservation Committee for Thursday, May 11th. Um, we're in a very unique setup here, so I think it'll be a little bit more challenging for us. Our intention today, in addition to our usual agenda, is to have some time as a work session to dive a little bit into the Tree City USA tree ordinance process. So welcome everyone. Um, only for me, because I'm sure everybody else has this nailed, I would like to do a quick run through of who everybody is that's here and what our representation is. So Matt, if you would like to start. Sure. Uh, yeah, so Matt Prinzing, uh, junior planner of the town of Penfield. Okay. Sinat Cavalier, chairman. Roseanne Cohen, member of the committee. Sarah Waterman, um, engineering department staff. Doug Sangster, town planner. Eric Tate, director of public works. Mark Valentine, town engineer. Uh, Daniel Moore, a member of the committee. Pat, Pat Schickler, member of the committee. Roy Green, member of the committee. Okay. That'll help me keep everybody straight. Really bad. <laughs> so thank everybody for coming today. Um, we actually have everybody, which is a really nice thing for us to have here. So. Um, the first thing, order of business, is the review and approval of the minutes from last month, from April 13th. Um, they were sent out to us via email. Um, once again, great detail in everything that we went through. It was actually very helpful to read through to know what we were going to do today. So does anybody have any corrections or concerns from those minutes? Okay. Can I have a motion to approve them? I move to approve them. I'll second. Not the minutes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Anybody against it? Good. Okay, um, standing report time. Daniel, do you have anything from your most recent Monroe County Environment Management Council meeting? I do. So uh, we started out the meeting with an uh, update from the Monroe County Department of uh, Environmental Services uh, where the county updated us about updating their uh, solid uh, waste management plan, and they're working on an organic management plan, which would include food waste, yard waste, and s stuff like that. The annual report for the Eco Park uh, that Monroe County has uh, will be coming out soon, and anyone that's interested of going to the Lilac Festival, the Department of uh, Environmental Services will have a solid waste trailer for anyone that wants to learn about that. And then during this meeting, the majority of it uh, was learning about an overview of the Department of Plan Planning and Development. And there will be a countywide uh, comprehensive plan, the first one in 20 years. And I won't go into specifics too much, but there's many reasons for the planning. And some of the guiding principles uh, for this uh, plan will be equity inclusion, climate resilient environments, and building partnerships, and then the planning themes uh, will be including community health, and this would be one of the first times that it actually has that. So the next meeting we will have is actually next Wednesday, and that will be having an overview of the Department of Environmental Services. Okay, thank you. As always, it sounds fascinating. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, on to our standard items here, review of required items. Do we have any town development projects to discuss? Uh, no, so since the last time, uh, same applications are still under review um, from previous. Only change is uh, 2067 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road was approved. That's a medical building in Parkside Commons. It's gonna become um, two restaurants and uh, some retail space. Uh, we have no new planning applications for May or June. Okay. Can I just ask a question that um, that development that was, um, I don't know if it was exactly low income housing or lower income that there was some, you know, the meetings or hearings. I don't remember the name of, was it? Um, can't remember the name of it. Uh, uh, the only one I can think of is we have uh, the Pastone Group has That's an it. application. Okay. It is still under review. Um, 
we are awaiting a new submission. When a new submission rece is received, we'll schedule a new public hearing. Okay, is that is that the one where there were some concerns from neighbors or? Uh, that one was, um, they had some issues meeting a couple specifications of the, the mixed use, pre, prior mixed use code. Okay. The town held a more, or had a moratorium on the mixed use district for a short period while we revised the code. Um, that period has ended, the new code has been adopted. Okay. Um, so we're anticipating a new, uh, a revised application at some point here in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any requests from the town board to act on? Not at this time. Very good, okay. Um, do we have any clean energy community actions to be aware of? Um, we are in the process of getting the items together for the energy audit for the community center, but there aren't any big status changes on that at this time. Okay. Um, actually, also for the LED lighting, I believe the week after our last meeting, the bid was completed. So they're working on the street light updating and I don't know the date for that yet. Um, <clears throat> sure, uh, so the, the contracts um, awards have for the overall townwide street lighting upgrade project have been, uh, the contracts have been awarded, the um, orders for the all of the materials, um, all of the fixtures themselves, have been placed, uh, the contractor that will be installing those um, has been notified, we're just waiting on the actual materials uh, to come in. I don't know, I don't have an exact ship date yet, uh, waiting that from the vendor, um, from waiting that from the, the actual vendor. Um, not entirely sure if, uh, I guess highly unlikely that they'll all come in at the same time in the same day, um, but with whatever starts coming in, uh, that's what we'll get started with. And so the committee is aware, if they don't remember, that project is a high impact action item for clean energy communities. And that specifically to achieve that item, we have to switch over at minimum 50% of our own street lights. The town of Penfield is one of the few in the area that owns all of our town street lights. So that's a lot of street lights to convert. It is, it is. Give or take about 850. But from what I understand, had already been proactive in starting that conversion. That's yes, correct. so wow. we did, so. Um, I should say, we probably have closer to 900 within the town. Uh, a few years ago, we did kind of a pilot program for an LED conversion within the Woodfield Estates neighborhood. Uh, that included 46 for, uh, fixtures. They're not gonna get changed out again, being that they're already swapped out to LEDs. Oh, we're doing the remaining 840 some, 850 some, uh, give or take. And then any, as repairs have been made over the years, um, some of the ones we have changed out ourselves with LED, all of those we will actually be, while we're changing them all out, whether they're LED or not right now, um, any that are LED will actually be taken back um, keeping in our own inventory to be able to swap out all of the street lights, the ones that surround you know, Town Hall, the ones that we have in our parks, uh, so we can change those. They weren't included in the, the, the roadside street light uh, contract, uh, but we'll be doing those ourselves. Any questions from anybody on our items? Okay. Okay, then let's move on to old business. Um, we had requested that Sarah provide an update to the CCA, just so we keep that on our regular cadence. Sure. Um, so previously at this committee, um, a, I think Roy requested what the timeline is for getting RECs and getting a copy of the RECs. Those are the renewable energy credits um, for information when um, renewable energy is used then or allocated towards a resident energy use, those correlate to these recs and those recs are retired so that they're not being essentially used twice. Um, just because you don't follow an electron from here to there, it's just to make sure that it's, it's being properly done. Um, we did reach out to Good Energy to get that information. 
um, the process for Constellation New Energy, which is our electricity supplier for this program, is that June, in June of every year, they retire their recs. So as of June 23, so that's coming up, um, they will provide us with a copy of those retired recs for the year of 22, 2022. So we do not yet have that document, um, but it is on the docket to get it. Um, and then more specifically to our CCA program um, and what's going on right now, um, the program has had a consistent number of accounts for the last six months. Um, basically, that means that if people are leaving the program, the same number of people are signing up. It's just, it's staying level. Um, as of the end of March, there's been approximately $150 average savings per resident within the program. Um, and then that makes a total savings for the town residents that have been in the program the entire time of just over a million dollars. Um, and that again is for electricity supply. Um, with that savings, there is also the consideration of this being overall a 50% renewable energy program. So half of the energy that has been used by those residents is hydro rather than the regular RG&E mix. Um, so it is it is also a green program. Um, and then looking back in, our, in March, the average RG&E rate um, for that month was 8.44 cents per kilowatt hour. And the 12 month average looking back from Mar to March of 22, um, those 12 months was 7.2 cents per kilowatt hour compared to our program rate of 5.77 cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the current update on the program. Um, go ahead. It's a question. What's the process to verify the number of recs retired mets the number of kilowatt hours that were consumed under the program? Um, I do not know that off the top of my head, but I can work with Good Energy to find the answer out. Um, as the program has been going on, every month they've been providing us with the number of kilowatt hours up for usage. So I believe with that, we should be able to backtrack when we do get the actual documents. And is Good Energy a third party that's doing a verification of that yep. program? Yep, they are. As our administrator, they, they don't get paid paid by us, essentially the way that their contract works is they get um, a tiny, tiny, tiny portion per kilowatt hour that is used. Um, and that's how they make money. Um, so no matter what in the program, they do make money, um, but that makes it so that they aren't essentially liable to um, Constellation New Energy specifically. Yep. And then the last question, will the recs that are retired, their certificate numbers be posted publicly online? I do not know at this point. Um, I think that's something reasonable to look into. Um, I don't know if that's regular process, truthfully. Um, but at minimum, once we get those documents, that is something that is foilable. Um, so if residents are looking for those specific information, like that specific information, and it's not posted on our website, then that is something that a resident can get. I, I would suggest, and I don't know if that's a standard process or not, but it's a public program, public recs that you know people have signed up into, then they should be publicly available. Okay. Whether it's FOIL or not, but. Is that standard practice? I mean, I've not, I know nothing about what you're talking about to understand. I know the rec verifications are standard. So if, if there's, um, usually those are recorded in some sort of um, one of the major uh, rec registries and those are typically recs when they're retired or retired publicly so they're not double counted. But I don't know if it's standard for a clean community program like this, no idea. Um, I don't know how big those documents are and those kinds of things. I think that would be a limiting factor depending where it goes on our website, that kind of thing. But like I said, everything in that manner that comes to the town becomes foilable. So it is available. It's just there's a pro it 
will be available. There's just a process residents might have to go to through mm -hmm. if it's not posted on the town website. But I can make that recommendation. Sure. Yeah, and and I don't think you need to post the you know. 500 pages of PDF documents that show the recs. I think you just need to do the, these certificate numbers were retired, you know, and just give a listing. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Okay, um, event updates. We had quite a bit that went on at the end of April, so. Um, I'll start with the EV car show and then Matt can address Good Neighbor Day. Um, for the EV car show that happened on Arbor Day, so that was April 29th, um, there were 200 attendees and approximately 70 cars at the show. Um, those were both resident owned and dealer supplied. They did have two different dealers there. Um, and then there were 11 groups tabling at the event. Um, that consisted of a wide range of things, but from Healthy Yards Monroe, um, Color Penfield Green, to um, Electric Car Associations, and it, it was a fun event. It was educational, and um, we also, at that event, um, Supervisor Debbie Draw presented the Mayor's Monarch um, Proclamation as part of the event, um, so that was exciting too. Um, she also, at the next Wednesday night town board meeting, presented that again so that it would be read into record. Um, and then moving into Good Neighbor Day. Um, this was um, uh, an event that um, uh, brought in 150 volunteers to help older uh, adults, veterans, and those disabled to do light yard work and spring cleanup. Um, uh, residents were encouraged to reach out to Sabrina Renner in order to um, you know, advocate for either their neighbors or as themselves as residents to um, get the, the help for that day. Um, and they ended up uh, having 17 residences picked out uh, for help, um, additional volunteers were sent to clean up uh, Harris Wayland Park and the ramps from 441 down to Panorama Trail. Um, Sabrina um, provided some pictures as well from the event. Um, which I'm just sharing here. It's, it's show longer, but, um, yeah, sounds like it was. Uh, Were there T-shirts? Yeah, I was just going to ask if there's special uh, shirts or, or was that that particular group? That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks like this is oh, um, good neighbor. the Good Neighbor Day shirt. Very nice. cool. So this is an annual event in honor of Terry Rothfuss. So I don't know if anybody knew Terry. Uh, he was a longtime farmer in East Penfield, still has family around. Um, so this was something he had kind of done and just to kind of look out for friends and neighbors and, and so in his honor, his family and, and the community center have continued on with that program to you know, honor him and keep this going. It's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it must have been a good day for it as well. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's good. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. So that brings us to our next item of old business, which is actually having us work on the tree ordinance. Um, so in the packet of stuff that was emailed to us was a document provided by um, Tree Cities, which I believe is, is what this one would look like, which is how to write a municipal tree ordinance. And then there was also two sample tree ordinances that were um, provided, one with a tree board and one without a tree board. And it's very, I did have a time to actually look at them side by side. The only difference really is, is that one chunk with, do you have a tree board or not have a tree board? Um, and then there was also included some of the local ones, the Brighton Forestry Plan and the Brighton Tree Code, the Greased 
for Greece forestry plan and Greece tree code, and then the Arondicoit tree code, as well as Orchard Parks um, requirements, what they had put in place, and then Tonawanda's version of it. So there was quite a bit of options for us. Um, so I think um, what would be most useful for us to look at is maybe just real quickly kind of go through, Sarah, do you have kind of a mental idea of what the list of requirements are that we would be expecting or is are we best to just I can start give you an idea um, if I find my document that I brought for okay. it. So I know we had a lot of discussion at our last meeting on putting it in code or putting something in and then keeping it as a separate reference document, which makes it a little bit easier for it to get updated versus putting the entire, all the verbiage in code. Whether we wanted to have a formal forestry plan to go with it or whether we wanted to reference things that are already in the code or already in practice. And then I think the other component that we needed to really have a good discussion on is um, authority in terms of which, how we want to have that aligned. Do we want to make sure that that sits squarely with the Department of Public Works or do we want to have some sort of shared responsibility with an organization, not necessarily us because we're not an authority organization. So how, if, if there is a reason that we want to do something other than with the town. Sure. Um, I'm happy to go over um, kind of the, the different sections. Um, would you be comfortable if first we have Eric Tate review what the current process is, just so the committee members can understand that? I think that'll help in the creation of this. It does make sense. What do we have in place? Um, sure. Um, so, you know, throughout the, the year or in, on any given occasion, we may get requests from different homeowners, residents um, with, you know, either concerned about a particular area, a particular tree. Um, it's either myself, my deputy director, uh, one of our foremen uh, will go out to actually take a look and assess the tree. Um, I guess first off, if it's within, if the tree itself is on private property, we don't touch it. Um, if it is on town property or if it is within the town's right of way, we'll then review the actual uh, condition of the tree. Um, unless the tree is either dying, diseased, dead, or otherwise hazardous, we do not do anything with that tree. Um, if it's a healthy tree, we leave it alone, even if the request from a, a homeowner or resident is, can you take the tree down? Um, we, we won't take a, a healthy tree down, um, only again if it's dying, diseased, um, dead, or otherwise hazardous with the kind of small exception of during some of our drainage improvement projects, if a tree um, or even you know some of our sewer maintenance, if for some reason we need to take trees down within our easements um, to be able to gain access, that would be the only exception um, where a healthy tree may need to be taken down. Um, or I guess if part of a bigger um, you know development plan for a town project. Um, the vast majority of our any tree work we doing we are doing um, you know is on town property or within the right of way and we're doing it as you know routine maintenance so that it you know you don't have a hazardous tree come down and on someone or on something you know and cause injury or, or any um, you know financial liability to the town. <coughs> so Eric you said you would do um, trees in larger development projects why wouldn't the developer do that? Uh, so um, if it's a, a town project, not on, if it's a private development, we've got nothing to do with it. Town, pro town development. So again, as you, you know, look around the, you know, the town, the various parks that we have weren't always, you know, they didn't always look the way they do now. Um, at times there have been certain areas or trees that have had to come down to incorporate that. Um, but nothing, again, that's if there's a particular tree that needs to be removed for a given reason, um, then we would, you know, do such, but otherwise we're, we're not taking it down um, unless the tree is dead, dying, diseased, or otherwise hazardous. And who determines whether it's dying, diseased, dead, or hazardous? Um, so oftentimes 
um, again, it's either a judgment call made by ourselves or um, because we don't have the, you know, we don't have a bucket truck, we don't have a lift to get up into these trees. Um, oftentimes we're actually contracting them out unless, unless it's a, you know, a, a smaller tree, roadside tree, um, or it's a tree, you know, in the middle of an open field within one of our parks and there's no hazard of, you know, if the tree were to, you know, tip the wrong direction, um, oftentimes we're actually contracting that out to, um, you know, two different uh, tree companies that have certified arborists that are coming out to help make that judgment call. If we have any, any hesitation or any uncertainty about a given tree, we'll consult with them. Is there any activity to survey town property for diseased trees in advance of, I'm mean, like, you know, early signs or any of that, or is it just as a tree becomes apparent that it's in distress? Um, so a little bit of both. Um, a few be few years back, we actually kind of did go through Greenwood Park. Um, we knew there were some some dead ash trees that were still standing dead, um, but we also looked there were some that ash trees or some ash trees that that weren't weren't dead but you know clearly diseased and dying um, you know proactively we did come through and take a number of those out um, again being a park and the amount of traffic there the, the kids playing the athletic uh, fields we didn't want to have anything happen to just take down what was dead and then hope that that nothing happens you know at the wrong time and correct me if I'm wrong, at minimum, the parks foreman is educated on how to determine for yes. this, this specifically for ash trees if those yep. have been, uh, what's the right word? So we, we often, yeah. Yeah. and I want to say it, it's probably every few weeks to, to a month at the most, um, Cornell Cooperative Extension does send us um, kind of links for upcoming trainings, um, specifically related to tree care, tree maintenance, um, and so on, and a number of those um, we have attended. So when, when you said that um, if it's on private property, um, you, don't, you don't touch it, but if you're called out, um, are you asking questions beforehand? Is it like in the middle of your backyard, or is it on a border, or do you, you know, do you know any of that in advance? We we do often try to get a little, uh, it's a little information from from whoever's you know either calling or emailing in um, to understand which particular tree, especially if they have more than one tree in their yard. Um, is there a particular location? Is it you know along the the edge of the road? Is it right. not? Sometimes okay. a homeowner may not know exactly. If it's theirs, where their property line is, or may not even understand that the right of way actually encroaches, you know, or extends up into the mm -hmm. lawn area that they're okay. mowing. Um, so we'll, you know, certainly come out. We'll measure. We'll verify. Well, we're not. Well, we don't can't verify in a, a, a survey to the exact inch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we know what our right of way road widths are uh, that vary from road to road. We can come out and measure from center line of the road to determine kind of if the tree falls within the right of way or not. So s say you go out and um, it's not falling, you know, it's close, but it's not falling within. And um, do you, ever, since you're out there, do you ever say, you know, it, it's not the towns, do you ever end up saying, oh yeah, this doesn't look good, or yep. and you, do, we have, you do do that? Yep. You, we you have at explained least, to residents, obviously you're not unfortunately, it, it's outside of our right of way, we can't spend public money on private property. Um, however, we do agree that the condition of the tree, you know, may or may not be hazardous, and if it were in the right of way, you know, had it theoretically been in the right of way, what we would have done, Knowing that it's on private property, it's their decision to make. Um, but you know, would oh, recommend. Uh, that, that. Yeah, that's what I was looking whether, for. Whether is it's if a single limb, if it's the whole tree. Um, okay, yep. that's what that's what I was looking yes. for. If you're out there and you realize, well, it's not on town property, at least make a, you know, share your experience or information on how you what you think the condition is. Okay, thank you. I mean, we are we do most the majority of our tree work in the winter months, um, kind of in between plow runs. Uh, we're going down, we're trimming back, you know, from sidewalks, from the roadway itself to make sure that any lower hanging branches, 
you know, especially when they have snow and ice on them and are hanging even lower, um, that they're not hitting not only our plow trucks, but school buses, uh, delivery vehicles, you know, passenger cars, that you're not ducking to, to get under limbs as you walk down a given sidewalk. Um, we're going through and trimming lower hanging branches, um, but you know, again, trying to trying to leave as much as, as physically possible as well. Okay. And then the alternate to that, now that we've taken things down, do you, is there a protocol for planting trees, replacing? Um, so within the, we, we typically do not uh, plant trees, um, especially if, if there's a tree that is within the right of way and, and at the request of a homeowner is you know, to be taken down. Um, we currently do not provide a replacement tree. Um, you know, it's up to the homeowner if they want to. However, we also require them to plant that outside of the right of way so that we don't have to spend additional money in the future trimming or removing that tree when it gets big enough or, or does, you know, have, it gets to the point where it's in poor health. Um, we do, throughout the year, we, we often do get requests or I guess more offers from residents, from different organizations and groups. Um, to provide trees to be planted around the town and within the parks um, and often do take them up on that and then you know they'll provide a tree they go, may go buy it and pick it up at a nursery uh, bring us the tree and then we actually plant that tree and then similar to the tree giveaway last year the town does sometimes pursue grants for tree plantings in our parks and on town land but do you, um, barring grants to plant trees or organizations or neighbors wanting to purchase and donate a tree, are there any, I understand you wouldn't you know, replace a tree in a, in a right of way, but what about, for instance, the ash trees that were taken down? Was there any, any ever any plans to replant that, you know, if there's a whole section of trees that you're taking out? Um, by the town, or maybe no money is set for at that. At this time, I don't believe there's a budget item for that. Okay. Um, yeah, we, however, like I said, and we are pursuing grants for that, sure. and there are grants specifically for areas that there has been have been ash tree removal. Okay. Um, and even that helps improve the likelihood of getting some of the grants that are out there. Okay. No, it's just to just sure. you know, it's valid. as you say, to know what's out there. Yeah. Out of curiosity, on an average year, how many trees get donated for planting in, in the park areas? Um, I don't know if I, I off the top of my head, I, I really don't know okay. that number. Um, I, I can, can do certainly 10 find out. or 100, <laughs> you know, I'm not talking <laughs> about 36. I, I'm, I'm going to say you're probably closer to, to 10. Okay. And how many trees do you typically take down in a year? Uh, again, that also depends on on the year and, and I guess the location. We've uh, 2022 order of magnitude. Uh, uh, probably a few hundred, most of which, um, the vast majority of which, have been dead ash. Yeah. Are there any? How should I word this? Historic or biologically sensitive trees that have been identified in the public? areas that we, that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Anything that any resident, that you guys that have been here for a while, are there any trees that people in Penfield are beloved, you know, <laughs> attached to? Like you know, at the Bicentennial, we did a outreach to one identify the town tree, which is the red maple, and then identify any significant trees. Penfield has, as we can see on the pictures around, is a huge farming community. So we don't have a lot of okay. old, old trees. Um, we have actually more trees in Penfield now than we did in the 1900s. So um, most of the trees were taken down. It was a large farming community. Um, so we actually have a vast more trees now than, than we ever have. Um, but I'd say, I know at the Bicentennial, you know, my recollection is that we reached out to people in the community Sentiment to identify if we had a significant tree in the town, and I'm sure you know we do in areas, but um, most of our trees are, I won't say newer or younger, we don't have a lot of 100 year plus old trees in the community. 
I think unfortunately you may find that out more when you lose a tree. I can recall articles about a tree at a farmstead on Creek Street. Where by sun, there's a, by Sunscape Farms, when that tree, you know, we're talking about, oh, that was, you know, 100-year-old tree, and, yeah, but and that came down, but it was a else. private property, not a, not a park. Okay, very And that's only because it was in the news. Did you say Penfield has it designated, the red maple? Is yes. The red maple is, so we had, it was designated in the, the bicentennial, that that is the town tree. That was part of last year and uh, this group's uh, giveaway and the tree plantings at uh, Rothfuss Park was the red maple to okay. Very in cool. keeping with that. I missed that. Um, and then is there is there anything in place that advises residents or developers of appropriate trees and plantings to put in? We do have an adopted um, list within our uh, design criteria. So we've got those tell people how thick the pavement is, what the slope of pipe should be. So all of our design criteria and in there, we do have an updated list um, of trees. Once upon a time, it did have ash trees in there. We've since updated it from that, but those are the ones that we tell developers as they come in as they're planting street trees or you know within developments, here's a recommended list. And we've had uh, Bruce Retzke, our town landscape consultant, every couple of years he takes a look at that. And I know I think we recently took off the Austrian pine that has a blight or something. So he kind of looks at those and says, no, these ones aren't as good or, or uh, recommended anymore. So we do try to keep that up to date. Is there, at this point in time, is it mostly all native? Is there any kind of? Yeah, and we've made the transition to that, I know, and I'm getting out of my tree realm, but I know there are like, I think uh, silver maples or there's other ones that are now considered to be, you know, more of an invasive species. Um, so we've shied away from those and try to, you know, okay. promote people to plant native plants. We did discuss at, I don't remember if it was this committee or the previous conservation board that it was about time for that to be reviewed again. That list? Yes. <laughs> Is is Bruce Zaretsky considered an arborist? I mean, because some of these say that we, you know, town arborist is in charge. Yeah, I don't know if he's a certified arborist. Obviously, he's a landscape architect. Yeah. He goes all over the country and speaks and presents about okay. it. So he's deemed an expert across the country. So actually, he's paid to travel far and wide. We're lucky enough to have him yeah. here in Penfield and, and consulting for us. But, you know, he's traveled the country and definitely you know, um, focuses on native plants and everything else. So I don't know if officially he's a hmm. certified arborist, but he is a recognized expert in the field of. Is he on our list of possible speakers for he us? He is, to Very he good. is. He is. <laughs> okay. We just know, know the cost. Uh, Correct. <laughs> I, I did figure that out. I just don't oh. know how long he would be speaking, and that's what changes it. It's an hourly class. Oh, okay. Um, so if we have a specific topic we'd like him to speak on, um, more specific than trees and plants, then <laughs> we can, can figure out a more specific answer. Like invasive species or something like that? Or native, or native plant things. Or there's, there's a number specific, of things yeah. you can cover. We did have a... And we kind of diverted off topic. I think we had the DEC come in. I think Doug organized that a couple years ago to come in and talk about invasive species and talk about some of the plants. We've got those groups yeah, that I don't, I don't remember what organization she represented, but she was it was Hillary Mosher with. Um, there was just she might have been Cornell Cooperative. There was just a class the this week um, on invasive species. I'm sure we could get the same contact information if the group wants that again. And I can say our uh, parks foreman, Tim Masterton, has actually been in contact with uh, an organization, um, I think even just yesterday, um, that well, would, has offered to come in and is looking for uh, specific invasive species kind of within, you know, our own town parks um, mm -hmm. and community and provide recommendations as to, to what to do to, to try to, you know, remove or eliminate those um, and prevent any further spread. I don't recall the exact organization, um, but um, I know he's been going back and forth trying to get a little more information on what they could or would do for us. That would be an interesting speaker to have once they determine what is 
been sp spotted in Penfield. And in the past, um, we were looking for like 20 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes, not overly long because it would be part of this meeting so that we wanted to include our working agenda as well as time for presentation. Sure. I think it'd be great too if we did have a speaker like that come in and we were able to identify things in Penfield that were invasive mm -hmm. that residents could look out for. We provide that as a community service information piece and say, be on the lookout for giant hog, hogweed or whatever it is, you know, and mm -hmm. and so residents can understand what it looks like and then how to identify and spot it mm -hmm. and then what to do about it. And I think that's part of their, I'm kind of looking back, um, I believe the the organization he's been in communication with is the Finger Lakes Institute um, in conjunction with Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Um, and I think the part of the intent was that they would come out while they're kind of spread, you know, they need to, to, or trying to help every community right. um, and may not be able to dedicate a ton of time into any mm -hmm. given location, but at least to try to pass on some of the knowledge so that we now, you know, we also know what to look for, what to do, um, and can try to, to help educate the community ourselves. So, right, so in other words, you or Tim would be able to then present it if it wasn't necessarily, that they're doing a train the trainers, so to speak. They're Correct. They're train you how to look for and that you can then train others. Yep. Okay. So then we're already paying you guys, so we don't have an extra fee, right? <laughs> we can definitely add that to the speaker list. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. And I, I did, again, it's slightly off topic. I did add the speaker that Roy sent out this afternoon. You said that. I have one more question, and I don't know if you get into this at all, and I think it was uh, maybe brought up ancillary to, to this, is what, do you ever get called into and what do you do about if there's a um, dispute between neighbors? The the tree's on the line, but it's not on town property line, but between neighbors, perhaps, and somebody's considering, well, I think that's dead, but they won't take it down, or it's dangerous and they won't take it down. Uh, so being a private property dispute, mm -hmm. we would not get involved. Okay. Um, I mean, I could picture that you wouldn't, but, yep. you know, is there any, like, that you advise or... Just that that it's a private issue. Civil matter. Civil, yeah. matter, civil court. <laughs> neighbors and okay. hire a surveyor. You know, we okay. don't have the expertise to delineate the property line. So we always recommend <coughs> people hire a surveyor, delineate your property line first, and then know if it's yours or not. And then mm -hmm. from there, you can talk to your neighbor and decide, you know, okay. if it's on the line, who's going to take it down. And okay. Nobody has neighbors like that, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you probably a really strange question. As we work on putting together an ordinance, um, what would you like to see that is not in place? Um, I don't know that I have a, a good answer for you just yet. Um, I know that the original kind of draft document that the Conservation Board had put together, um, I believe a, a year or maybe even more uh, back, I had reviewed that and my personal opinions that it was way too strict um, and controlling and, and frankly a, a, a lot more, a bigger workload than we would actually be able to successfully take on. Um, I know I've well, I haven't read through line by line uh, surrounding towns um, amongst you know some of my county meetings, um, the our highway superintendents association meetings. I have uh, spoken to a number of the surrounding towns uh, that have enrolled in the program to understand, I guess, first off, what it even is, um, you know, why they did it, um, what they've looked to get out of the program itself, um, and. I guess what what the the designation itself, you know, not only requires but also what it what it means to their towns. Um, so I have a better understanding of kind of the impact to the towns that have enrolled in the program. Um, again, we can we can kind of make it what whatever we want for Penfield. Um, I, I don't have any, I guess, personal opinions or, or strong feelings as to. Uh, 
that it has to be any particular way um, would be willing to work with a group to okay. help any which way I can. First of all, don't worry about the other draft I, tree policy yeah. that um, didn't necessarily speak for the whole conservation sure. board, and I'll leave it at that. And this committee uh, is working on from, from a blank slate, essentially. Yes. And um, one question that I guess I would have on this then, all of the things that you explained to us as far as your current procedures and activities, is any of that actually memorialized in writing any place? Because some of what might be a start is the things that you already do that are caring for trees. So as far as any type of official town code, I don't... A code or I don't that know this that is your job or anything written, like that. Um, again, any time we're doing, if we get called out to a particular residence for, just as, as an example, you know, in regards to a request for a tree to be taken down, you know, we go out, we measure, we verify that the tree is within the right of way. Um, we do put in writing and, and discuss with the with the adjacent homeowner or whoever is mowing the grass area um, around mm -hmm. that tree. We have them sign off an acknowledgement form to understand what what exactly we would do, what we would not do. Um, so we do put in writing, we'll take the tree down, that we have ident identified that the tree to be, you know, dying, diseased, dead or otherwise hazardous. Um, you know, we'll take it down, we'll remove the debris. Um, you know, in some locations we've, you know, needed to, actually grind or remove the stumps. More often than not, we don't. We'll leave the stumps if they want to, to grind the stump themselves. That's their choice. Um, and that we're not replanting a given tree. Um, so we at least do put that much in writing well, to, to I share. But I, as far okay. as... Maybe. Not so much with the resident. I meant how do you know what like you're supposed to do? That you use. <laughs> Thank you. That's the word. Statement of work. Yes, yeah, statement of work. You know, in other words, um, how did you know this is as much as what we're supposed to do, that we're supposed to, you know, give something to them in writing? How were, how were you trained to do this? Were you trained off of a written document, or is it word from, you know, person to person, this is how I do my job, this is what you're responsible for? Um, so I think it's been a little, probably more so collaboration with, you know, former supervisors, mm -hmm. former uh, parks foremen, mm -hmm. um, you know, former members of the DPW itself, mm -hmm. as well as kind of taking into account any recommendations and anything that we're learning from these uh, classes that are uh, mm -hmm. put on from the Cornell Cooperative Extension. Right, so in other words, something that, you know, say you, oh, I'm gonna shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> really taking shoot the advice of, of others that have been doing okay. it, um, they have the, the job knowledge and the experience rather than just deciding what we want to do on any given day. Oh, oh sure. Part, of, I part of the hope in bringing Eric to this committee while we're working on this document is so that those items can be memorialized. That, that's what I was thinking that's is part that of the goal. to me would be a start of exactly what you currently do do. And to answer a little bit of the question on um, what, what advantages to the town that have established that are belonging to the organization, I um, think it's not so much for this other organization to have any kinds of oversight or anything on us, but it's to um, be eligible for more opportunities for grants to to get trees and other. Could you clarify that? I'm sorry. Um, you're, did you say that for the idea of having an oversight? No, not to have an oversight. Okay, I'd say because. Um, there was, in previous meetings, there were talk of, well, you know, why do we really need to have, be involved and submit um, a, a policy or a guideline to approval to become Tree City? Why do we need need to do this? Um, we do fine, on our, you know, I'm, it's previous um, comments, a um, long time ago. <laughs> um, but it is more to, um, be able to get the get grants. Sure. So, for example, right now we're looking into a grant to get trees for one of um, one of the town properties, mm -hmm. and you get more points in the application review if you're a tree city. Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't have to mm -hmm. be a tree city to get the grant, but you get more points mm -hmm. towards your application. Mm -hmm. so, so, I have a question, and it's an important point you make about uh, you know the procedures that were described. It's it's great what you're describing. Are there other written procedures that the town does that 
is available for anything else? Like, is there written procedures for anything, let alone this particular dealing with trees? In relation to plants? In relation to anything. So, like, I'm wondering if it's, if there's written procedures that this could be a part of, like, your normal DPW duties or... So this could also, so tree removal, those kinds of things, that could be potentially part of our design criteria, that could be part of the town code, so specifically this ordinance, or within the town code, like a different section. There's a number of locations that kind of procedure could exist. It could even just exist in like a manual that the DPW has. Yeah, um, that's what I'm asking. What exists yeah. now, currently? Um, so we do have a number of written policies as far as, you know, I, well, they kind of vary from day to day and job to job. Um, we do have written policies for, for I guess, what the, the workload actually consists of, what's required, what should be done. Um, and that's all reviewed uh, with the, the crew you know, before they start um, any given job. So is there anything that contains this tree, you know, some of what you just described? I guess we're trying to get, because we don't want to recreate, I right. think I'm get, you're going with, yes. you don't want to recreate the wheel, but try to work off of something that is existing. Is existing. Yes. Um, and I can that's certainly bias, talk too. with my parks foreman to see what he has. He may have something that, that would even be a better kind of boilerplate or start mm -hmm. than than what I'm thinking of. Um, I, I believe we've got, uh, that we do have something that <clears throat> may be of um, help for this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and if it's a manual, that's great. If it's a written procedure that, or policy of some sort, that's great, but let's let it live in something existing mm -hmm. versus recreate something new or create something new. And, and take advantage of what you already Are doing. do. And I think if we have that, it only can help you, you know, as you get new employees or uh, 50 years from now when you decide to retire and uh, <laughs> you can pass on to oh somebody my. else. So. <laughs> That's like his job. That number is years. supposed to go down each day, not all. <laughs> <laughs> Be fun. Okay. So thank you very much for the input. I think. Um, We'll go ahead at this point, and I think Sarah loop back into what our kind of game plan might be. What things do we need to answer? What? Um, so Matt pulled up the spreadsheet that we discussed at our last meeting that covers the different sections of the ordinance that we need to have. Um, it also contains. Uh, so his document does not contain a tree board, just for reference, um, because that's not a requirement, that's an option. Um, so if you'd like, I can go through the different sections and give a general idea of what's included. Um, from there, what the goal of this committee, I believe, is, is that we will work on and write the ordinance. Um, we do also have that boilerplate document Which that is what Matt he also just, just pulled just up. called up there. Thanks, Matt. Um, so I can go through the different sections. Um, so if that before, works, before we do that, yeah. are you comfortable with the sections as we went over them last time, or would you like that review? This is the idea of authority and I'm purpose. I'm not even sure if I recall. Do you? We went. We did go through a lot of those questionable sections, but I think it'd be good to go through the whole thing. Okay. I, I was. And I was going to ask the same. Do it. Given that I wasn't here, if you can even just do okay. a brief run through. I just of wanted it. to make sure it was value added. So. I'm going to clarify. You'd like me to go through the different sections, or you would like to go through the entire document? The different sections that are required. Okay. Great. Um, so starting at section one, that's the purpose. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We're just defining why the town is looking to create this ordinance. Um, section two is definitions, and that's just explaining what different terms mean. Um, section three is the authority and the power. Um, that specifically talks about who is responsible, whether it's a managing department, a specific director, if it's like the head of the DPW, if it's the town planner, the town engineer, and so on. 
And then within that, that also explains how coordination between the different departments work. Um, so say we're looking at planting trees and, or the town's looking at planting trees and we need to determine exactly where they go. Most likely the parks department will reach out to engineering, we'll do some work together. That may also include the planning department for locations and mapping. Um, that's, that's what that section covers. Then moving forward, I believe this committee did agree to not include the advisory tree board at this point, or do you want me to review what that is? Um, that was kind of, that was the alternate Yep, that's version. the alternate yes. version. Yeah, no, I think okay. just go on with, um, so we, then we the understand that that is okay. one of the authority questions that we need to ask. Okay. Then following that is tree planting and care standards. Um, most of the different plans that we've reviewed or discussed will refer, refer to a tree forest, I'm sorry, a town forestry plan. Um, that can also refer to something along the lines of the town's um, design spec or specifications. Um, so that can, re that can refer to another document. If the committee believes it's valuable, we can also discuss including that in the ordinance but it should be considered that if those details are included in the ordinance, any time that those details need to change, it has to go to a public hearing and to the town board to change them. Um, so say different care standards are determined to be better 10 years from now, and we want to change that, that needs to go to the town board if it's memorialized in the actual code versus the design spec specifications or a, tree, a town forestry plan. Just a question on that. How yep. often would you anticipate that sort of change? Um, because I am not an expert in trees or forestry, I don't actually know how often standard care practices change. Um, mm -hmm. I would have to refer to Bruce Zarecki or one of the experts that we would reach out to. In general, how often does he tweak that design considerations? Um, Maybe every five to 10 years. Okay. So it's not so all I that think, frequently. It, not at all that frequently, but I think just as stuff comes up or as, say, as we've got a, a blight or something else that's coming on with specific trees. Obviously when I first started, ash trees were a, a, a great tree to, to plant in, in right of ways and plant on properties. And obviously that's that's changed. So you know we've taken those out. So it's not a, an every year, but you know, maybe every five years we kind of take a look at that unless we know that something's come up to revisit that. So would he approach you and say, hey, we got a problem, we need to... It's kind of gone both this. ways, and we've looked at stuff and said, hey, something's up, or he okay. said, you know, we've spent this a little ash while... This thing is out of control. we been a little bit since we've looked at yeah. those, okay. and I know we've got some new things. Let me take or, another look at that. That's even recently, I think, one of our staff members looked at the list and said, oh, I believe this is considered an invasive, an invasive species now. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's just, it's whoever gets to it first. Okay. And the tree planting... Um, were there any more questions at this time? Well, would um, avoiding having to change something and going changing code, isn't the fact that they're putting, um, look at this um, conform to national standards, Inst ANSI Institute, because they're gonna be updating theirs as yep. things come up. And the same thing with um, the preferred species list, the director shall then maintain or direct, well, I mean, I don't know who will, be the director, the authority, the authority sure. but um, may, she'll maintain an official list. The official list, not actually the list itself included into this ordinance. No. So, so no, it, it seems not, it that it's be. already so set up to that would be, be my fluid. Yeah. Um, it would be some, fluid. Some municipalities have chosen to define more detail in the code. So okay. it's my job to give you that information and mm -hmm your responsibility to help make the decision. Yeah, okay. Um, but just for full clarity, some are including it in the code and some are not, and there's positives to doing that and there's negatives to doing that. Yeah, I would um, And several with have the... done a full forestry plan, which is, as I scan them, like a 50-page document that was like well outside my comfort zone in creating. Yeah. No, I... I prefer the, you know, something fluid without having to go through a lot of uh, code and policies to get something updated. Okay. Um, Personally, anyways. Were there any other questions at this time? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
than continuing on a prohibition against harming public trees. Um, that basically details um, what people can't do um, along the side, the terms of like, one of the examples is you can't top trees. So like just chopping them in the middle and taking mm -hmm. the top off. Um, yeah, so that one's kind of straightforward, I think. And it's all related to public trees throughout the whole thing, correct? Yes. It's not yep. private. Not Everything in the ordinance is pertaining to public trees. Does it include trees and right of ways as far it, as it's written now? Yes, um, but the town has jurisdiction over town right of ways. So, like county and state right of ways, we cannot control. Does that make sense? Yeah, so like I'm just reading this little line right here where it says you can't attach a cable wire or any other object to street park or public tree. So like if a tree is in the right of way, um, that's considered a public tree. If somebody hangs a wire on it or a sign on it, that would be against this code if it was written this way. Yes, that would be accurate. I don't like that, but sure. well, it's, um, that's We yeah. get to... Yeah, yeah, we get yeah. to talk through it, but yep. Yep. I just want to understand what it's written. Yeah. Yep, that's my understanding. Um, no for sale signs or lo I, lo lost animal or garage <laughs> sale. I, I, I'm going to say if you attach a sign to a, like the tree that's in my right of way on my front yard, yeah. it's over 100 years old, you're not going to hurt that tree. <laughs> but it could be as simple as a swing too. So yeah. it's just the idea is what, what do we envision something like that and what would we feel was reasonable and not reasonable. Right, yeah. And, yeah. So. and some municipalities are, are more historical in certain areas and, and care a lot more about those types of things. And that may be why they don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, this committee gets to help make that determination. Um, were there any other specific questions at this time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then continuing on for adjacent owner responsibility, um, this kind of explains that like they're not, I think they're not allowed to plant a tree in the right of way if um, they fail to meet the need, meet the requirements, then there may be a cost to them. Um, so like if someone, if in my front yard I take out a tree that's in the right of way, it may end up being a cost to me to replace it. Those kinds of things can be included in that section. Um, then certain trees can, are declared a nuisance. Um, that is actually a section we need to make a determination of the phrasing. So it can be declared a nuisance or a hazard. Um, as the DPW has previously done it, it's my understanding they prefer the term hazard. Hazard can be more specific. Um, we would also likely put a definition of what's considered a hazard in the second section under definitions. I, and, and I would agree, I think hazard would be more applicable. Um, just an example, a cottonwood tree, depending on the time of the year, it's that's a nuisance, a nuisance to mm -hmm. someone that has allergies to that tree. Yep. Um, and we often do get requests to, to take down cottonwood trees, as you see, you know, pollen and, and the cotton itself kind of blowing around. And we explain, unfortunately, it's while it's a nuisance, it is a live tree, and we're not going to take take that tree down for that reason. And with that, um, having the ordinance be as objective as possible mm -hmm. is very beneficial for the town when we are enforcing things. Yeah, yeah I definitely agree. There's no definition for hazard now? I thought there, there was. There is for nuisance beginning. at the beginning, oh, okay. but there's not for hazard. And that's oh, just. Yeah, they've got nuisance. This, this, this uh, version. This version. Wherever yeah. they pull this, this version has mm -hmm. got nuisance. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking too is like, if you're doing maple syrup and you drill a little hole to put your maple syrup tap in there, that would be against this ordinance because you're harming the tree. Well, and yeah, probably I wouldn't be. I think that might be a tree concern, right concern with a public, public tree. property. That um, would be an issue if you're yeah. going into the parks and yeah. decide you're going to tap the town trees and yeah. make your own maple Trying syrup. Little yeah, maple that's our plan. Little, I mean, little maple syrup maple business. Syrup. <laughs> but Sarah, when you were actually, it's the section before when you were saying, um. Um, you know, so it'll be something that we want to talk about, especially with Eric, it's on a, um, oh, where was it? The, uh, the adjacent owner responsibility, A, it says that they could plant, they may plant and maintain trees in the adjacent parkway area, so maybe that's something, because I think when you read it, you had said that they may, it's, they could it, not. And that's what I mean, we would have to make the determination right, what goes in we, that. Like um, Eric said, he's, you know, they're encouraging. Sure. 
don't plant another so, tree in this session. At this time, the town's design spec, I don't think it's changed yet. So uh, they, yeah. yeah, within the, the town's design criteria, um, specifically under street trees, uh, we did change that a few years ago to say that uh, trees are not to be planted uh, or not allowed to be planted within the town uh, public right of way okay. and or any existing utility easements as it you know causes problems with utilities or you know if a utility company needs to dig we don't want them to have to harm that tree either and i can also clarify okay. i said um if an owner plants one in or I think I said if an owner takes a tree out, they may have to replace it. Yes. Um, this this paperwork also specifically says the opposite of that, of if a resident plants a tree or plant in the right of way and it causes an issue and has to be removed, they mm -hmm. would have to pay for that yes. removal. Yes, yes. Okay. But this is where I think going through it, we would have to look and say, okay, that talks about adjacent parkways. How do we define parkways and make sure that that's very clear to us as well as we're going through things. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so. If you're comfortable, I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, then the next section is violations and penalty. Um, as of right now, those are pretty simple sections in the draft. Um, it should be considered that for items, excuse me, for penalties and violations that the town issues at this point, the town does not determine what the fee is for those types of things. They would, we, well, we, the code enforcement office will issue a violation which will cause that resident to have to appear in court and then a judge will determine what the penalty is. So I don't believe that we can actually define an amount or anything like that. This current draft does have an amount. Yeah. So just, just for clarity and understanding. Okay. But we could make it say that it will follow, it will be considered a code violation and those rules would yes. take yep. precedence. Absolutely. So um, can we confirm that 100%? Like you just said, you don't believe that we can do this, but can we confirm that? Or how can Mark, we confirm that? Can you confirm for me? <laughs> You've told uh, I mean, me before. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, Typically, staff doesn't find anybody unless, and we can check New York State law, you know, whether there's a, that's the only time we put penalties in our code is if it's a New York State law and they've got itemized things already. Um, otherwise, it'd be determined by the judge. But yeah, we can confirm that between now and next meeting so we can come back with additional information. But, um, you know, other than that, you know, as far as, as a staff member, I can't come out and say, Matt, we're going to fine you $300 and this is, you know, he would get a violation notice issued an appearance ticket to go to court and then the judge would, you know, issue the, the fine for him on that. I, I get that. And, and maybe it's more of a, you know, maybe it's two questions, right? Like, not that I expect, you know, the, the people in the DPW to come out and say, look, you violated this, you need to pay a fine. But maybe it's more of if there's a violation, here's the, here's the fines that could be you know, for this offense, it could be this, or for this offense, it could be that. So there's like some categories of fines. And maybe that's the question is, are we able to set those categories of, of fines that then the judge or whoever can then determine if it's applicable or not? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a question for, for, the judge. for the judge to look at. And according to New York State, it can say if it's a misdemeanor, they already have determined levels. So it's, again, probably not up to us. They'll say if a misdemeanor is 200 to 500. Uh, okay. Felony, you know, they already have kind of predetermined New York State. And would it depend it in, on the size of the tree, you know, you know, yeah, that, that sort that of thing? Part, I don't know if it's a sapling versus a 100 year old oak tree, whether New York State law differentiates that or if, or if that's where the category or the, the range of a fine, you know, would apply in there, but we can get more clarity on that for the group. Okay. So a code, so a code violation is considered a misdemeanor? I, I don't know. I'm, I yeah. just put it out there. I say again, I'm. No, it was in here too. I mean, it's right in. It's right in there. So yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, just take this as totally made oh, up. I know. Yeah, I just want to make sure. No, I know it's is. totally made up, but it's certainly things you know. Yeah, that's, going that's through it, we can is, say, the judge can. As yeah. we're noticing it, to say yeah. go back to it or find out more on it. Yeah, we can reach out. Yeah, that's the point, right? We don't yep. know, and it's just be good to understand what the parameters of this should be before we write. Absolutely. Some sort of language. I agree. Okay, then I'll keep going. Yep. 
Um, then it explains what the appeals process is. Um, with that, we'll, we can memorialize some of what the process is with the judge, with if it has to go to um, the code enforcement office again, or any of those types of things that will gen that will likely just reflect what the town currently does mm -hmm. for those types of for appeals. Um, then savings and repeal. Um, that's kind of a common statement of if anything's in conflict, um, what you consider first. Um, then severability is um, if anything is unconstitutional, it doesn't apply. Oh. Just as a question, are those last three sections an optional because scanning through the list that you put together, in most cases, those are not listed. There's not an appeal process listed. There's not a savings and repeal and there's not a severability. I would have to review my why is there a tree ordinance document. Okay. Uh, I mean, if going through the um, Tree City USA bulletin, how to write a municipal tree ordinance, it says throughout many times that no ordinance is alike. And these are basic samples that they provide. Um, so considering that all of the ordinances that we've kind of pulled a lot of our information from the local ordinances, they don't contain these. They're definitely not a requirement for Tree City USA and it's not a requirement by you know the, the town of Penfield by any means. So I wouldn't say that um, there's really any section that we just went through that has to be in our tree code in order to be you know, considered by Tree City USA or for it to be effective. Okay. I'll revise that real quick and say that the purpose, definitions, and authority are required. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Could you, say, could you repeat that, sir? The first three sections, the purpose, definitions, and authority are required. Okay. And that's, it just can't exist without those. Correct, get that. Those last three may be already listed within our code. They are in different I, I know our code has severability clause, it basically says if the word is misspelled, it doesn't throw the whole code out. Um, that's covered in other parts of the code, so that's may, probably why it's not in individual ordinance Set sections. Case. It's okay. covered in the code, yeah. you know, at large. So. so it could just be, that's in there, don't worry about it. So okay. the fines and stuff could be in the regular part of your code too, right? Correct. Yeah, and that's the part that, yeah. that may already be in there and we just need to enumerate, enumerate you know, what a violation is or, mm -hmm. you know, it's a misdemeanor or what it falls right. under in the, the penal okay. code under New York State. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that was a good review and looking at the clock, that also means that this is probably our best place to quit for today so that we can finish up the rest of the agenda um, and then figure out the best way to move forward okay. with this. Okay. So we have some options. One is do we want to do a similar format at our next meeting and take the time for this? Or are you interested in a group in seeing if there's an alternate date and time to do this as well? and then reserve our next meeting for other business. So kind of good of the order, what is your, what are your feelings? I don't know, so like you, uh, one question I use some logistics, right? Like it, typically with a document like this, I'd wanna see a straw man and we have an example, right? So somebody just needs to go through and start adding in the pieces that make sense that we, so we have something to kind of review and go off of, right? So maybe that's, I know there's still some outstanding questions, but at least we can get it started and saying this is the one we want to go off of. So maybe there's a, are we allowed to work offline and just have like a common document that all of us can go in and just wherever there's questions, we can just comment on that or, or make changes as necessary and then come back with a document that we can then walk through and make final decisions publicly. Yeah, we're certainly allowed to do that sort of thing offline via email or some other file sharing. It's not going to be a problem. Um, but if we use this, oh, go sorry. ahead. I was going to say, if we use this as the straw man, we already have that, and we're sort of starting to go through and looking at the words. Um, I mean, e either way, but I'm saying, you know, we already have this as the straw, you know, just as it comes up, we've already identified, you know, that we've got to talk about hazard versus nuisance and maybe redefi redefine those things. And 
I don't think any one of us, well, I don't, okay, I'm not gonna speak for anybody else. I don't have the experience or the knowledge to put in what I think qualifies as the hazard. I think, you know, that would be coming from Eric. I, and I can probably come up with that uh, particular definition um, and maybe even, even able to pull some of the language from uh, New York State Highway Law and how exactly they, you know, deem or define or determine, um, you know, trees, at least within the, the roadway and the, the highway right of way uh, to be hazardous. Um, so if I'm hearing the members, well, understanding them well enough, maybe I can put together a Google Drive document that includes this draft ordinance I can send that out to the committee members and town staff. That way the committee members can work on that between this meeting and the next meeting. And that would allow us both for everyone to input questions, for town staff mm -hmm. to answer some okay. questions, and then also for us at the next meeting to review the actual document as it progresses. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that sounds good. And then we can, um, or even just to say, oh, this is, this is a, like you just said, submit questions yeah. or something so, that we'll um, have to talk about. In Google Drive, you can put questions, you can highlight sections and put a comment, so you can put a question okay. in there. We can just respond to that in the same document. Okay. Um, the biggest thing with that is, um, because it would be a working document, say I go in and I wanna change something, it would be helpful, I believe, to the committee if I highlight what I changed and acknowledged why I changed it or how I changed it so that other members know mm -hmm. what's different. Sure. So just be very respectful in terms of commenting and identifying I, things. And then town staff will, will review it before the next meeting, but if say during the week of the next meeting you input questions, that kind of thing, or the day of the meeting, you may not immediately get answers. Yeah. So, so I've worked with Word like that and PowerPoint of making comments and changes and highlighting. Similar. I don't know, is it? It's, it's very, very similar. Very similar. Yeah. Okay. And you oh, can you, track you'll changes. send instructions on how to use that because I think I've tried before. And I'll I can send some and if you have any trouble, you can come on in and yeah. I can, can get help a tutorial you during <laughs> because I'm like, hmm, I haven't um, used that. And just that. as a reminder for anyone, for everyone here, the town hours, town hall hours have changed to 8.30 to 4.30. Um, so that is when the town hall is open. That is when we are at the town uh, town hall. Um, so if you want to see us in person outside of this meeting and don't have an appointment, come on in during those hours. Okay. okay. And let's give that a go. And then we'll just request that we go ahead and use the similar format to this for the next meeting. Okay. okay. And I stated it just before the meeting, but just for everyone's awareness again the setup with the tables and the screens that is something that pctv is testing at this point um, most nights when we have this meeting there's a public hearing afterwards and this setup does not work for the public hearing and because that is a decision making board the, the planning board is their setup needs may end up coming first so we may be sure. back to okay. the old setup, it's um, it's and they're, they're gonna figure out what they can do to make it the most accessible for everyone. That's good. I, I think do like having, this way. I think having these extra even would make a difference with us all being able to see the words. <laughs> having it closer was yeah. yep. so to the do big. That. And that's, that's part of what we talked about. Yep, so that's good. Okay, so real quickly, I just do wanna get through the rest of the official agenda so that in case we do have any other new business happening, we do get to capture that. So I'll move into new business, new events. Do we have anything going on in the next month? I do not have any new events at this time, but I actually do have a new business item that's more of um, an alert to the committee. Um, the town is moving forward with the comprehensive plan and has begun their seeker review. So they did provide the, a document, their, their seeker document to us. I can send that out if committee members are interested in viewing that. Basically it helps to establish that the town, um, that the town board is lead agency. Yes, the town yes, board is That requesting. the town board is, is requesting to be lead agency. Um, and that's um, 
just a requirement that they go through that process. And because we are a relevant committee, they're letting us know. So with the comprehensive plan, is there any conservation committee items that should be considered that we could advise them on or that we should be aware of besides the, the seeker? Uh, and what I mean is like the existing open space plan that we have is from 1999. Um, is there any opportunities to include that open space or green space into that comprehensive plan? That is actually one of the implementation items. So one of the sections we do have is uh, sustainability. Um, out of that, one of our implementation items is uh, for the town to revisit and uh, to revisit the 2002 open space plan as a 25 year update. So that's a guidance for 2020, uh, for leading into 2027, as well as to um, reevaluate our criteria and look at new properties that may be suitable for inclusion in any future open space update. And is there uh, any opportunity to identify um, not necessarily new properties, but just like an overall assessment of what would be considered either um, agricultural, biologically diverse, um, conservation potential areas within the town. So in other words, we, we've got target properties that we want to potentially go after for open space, but are there other things that we should be looking at when we look at the totality of what's left in the town of Penfield from green and biologically diverse areas, and how does that fit into the com com comprehensive planning? That's part of what goes into the open space assessment, was <laughs> looking at all those different elements, so it's not just open land, whatever we looked at, steep slope areas, it looks at you know environmentally sensitive areas, so that was different elements, so in that um, update, maybe open space isn't the right name for it, but you know that would be an assessment as part of that document to go out and look at the properties, um, at that time, we'd put out to the residents, as we've done in the past, if anybody wants to suggest promote areas, you know, for the committee to look at. Um, so coming out of the comp plan, that'll be a recommendation to form a new committee and then to get started kind of on an update to that, that past document. So the comprehensive plan is relatively broad, um, given that it covers a whole wide swath of topics on the general um, future and guidance for the town. Um, so while the document doesn't have, I don't know if it necessarily addresses it in as, in the same words as, as you're sort of putting forward as such, but um, some of the strategies and actions that are proposed in the document, I think would follow along with what you're saying. So what are the opportunities for our committee to help or assist or guide or? So at this point, um, the comprehensive plan has moved forward so much that they've already reached out to EEAC previously. I'm not aware if Conservation Board was previously reached out to, but to f determine what um, applicable items the town should be pursuing. So though the comprehensive plan has started to include things like clean energy communities and climate smart communities. It's established that we should be considering the Monroe County um, cap that they've been that they're working on and just those kinds of other items that we've actually been working on or the town has been looking to already pursue hmm. so are you saying that it's too far advanced for us to now come in and it's not really a comment period anymore well I mean it's going to well, go out to public hearing yeah, so sure. it's just getting to the town board it'll be going to them today tomorrow the town board will you know take their initial look at it and then they're going to schedule a public hearing and then obviously the entire community is you know welcome to provide comment and feedback on the plan yes yeah, so if the committee wants to provide comments on the plan as a whole I'd recommend doing it through yeah, a public hearing or part providing of um, public comments in that way um, in terms of a wholesale review or drafting of the document the documents already drafted um, there may be opportunities for the committee in the future to look at um, ways that some of the items the town is looking to take action on. The committee could have some, um, or could assist with. Um, the, the committee will definitely like, assist on some yeah. of the implementation actions, oh, the way okay. it's written. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we already have been, in yeah. a way, yeah. if you look at what are some of our standing agenda items are, the idea that clean energy 
community. communities yeah. is one of those. Okay, so is that open to the public yet or is it not out to the public? It is not open yeah. yet. So the town board will be scheduling the public hearing probably in July, I think is when. So they're getting the document shortly. Um, they'll take a look at it and then they'll, um, we're gonna actually discuss it next week at the town board work session. And then the town board, whether they're ready or not to then schedule the public hearing or set the public hearing date, so. But it sounds like, yes, there's enough interest in our committee July. that if we could have access to it, it would be. Sure. Yeah, and it'll, so, be, it'll be put out on the website and everything yeah, else. Well, so, so it's and not for, just. For clarity, I, I'm just acknowledging what was given to me and was sent to our committee was the seeker document. So mm -hmm. that defines um, what what type it is and, and those types of things and that explains acknowledges that the town board is looking to be the lead agency. It's that gets sent, to, like it's a small picture. No, so at it. this point, it's not like I'd be sending out the whole document, mm -hmm. but that will be available once a public hearing is set. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, is it foilable? I mean, we'll put it out on the like, website. As soon yeah. as the town board yeah. schedules I, I the public hearing data, it'll be put on the website yeah. and that'll be open for we, all so committees maybe we can, to come in on it. Maybe we can do that as a future agenda item once it becomes available. Sure. Uh, look, just say, anybody look at it, what do we think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or can we get it in advance of it going public? Um, I can check with the town board. I mean, at this point, you know, it's it's been just with the committee. Um, so the committee's been working on it, um, and then it's going to the town board. So as soon as the town board discusses it next week, we can ask and see if they're ready to share it with the committees or if they want to just put it out to the community at large all at once. Sure. Then as a follow-up, I will send out the seeker document to the committee. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other new business? Okay, in that case, um, I would like to, our next meeting is June 8th, same time, same place. Um, and I'm going to accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Okay, any second? Chair, I'll second. Okay, thanks. Anybody opposed to us adjourning our meeting? Okay, then we will adjourn our meeting, it is 556. 557. Very good. Thank you for the changing the digital or the analog to digital there for me. <laughs>